but we do have the uh, ability to sit and have a good conversation this morning. And Pat Cato has joined us. He is the mayor of Newcomerstown. And uh, Pat, good to see you again. Glad you were able to make your way in. Well, thanks for your invitation. I really always appreciate it. No problem whatsoever. It's uh, coincidental that we uh, were talking about the uh, Cy Young days earlier this morning. So I know that's on the agenda, but there's so much more going on. And uh, honestly, the mayor's office and the council doesn't really plan that, but uh, you're certainly involved. Well, there's there's a, a committee that does that and works on that all year, uh, like a lot of the other uh, activities that we have in town. And, and that getting that Cy Young Award winner is a, a, a nice coup for them. That Every year that makes it worthwhile coming. And they got a guy that also pitched for the Indians, which makes it even a little more local. You hope you get bigger draw. That's right. <laughs> that's good. Well, we look forward to that in June then. So, uh, But that's not going on right now. Uh, sounds like a lot of things are going on. You're constantly uh, improving and uh, new things. I know you were getting a new building. Where, where are we at on that? Basically, we just got the bidding in for uh, the new administration building. Uh, it's going to be where the Morgan's Pharmacy used to be on, on South College beside the Respects. I almost said the IGA, Respects. Yeah. And uh, we're excited about that because it, it allows us to grow. We're going from 2,500 square feet to 6,000 square feet. Um, we're able to add some offices for the and allow us to grow more in, in that uh, department also. And one of the big things that came out when we did a survey, a citizen survey about three years ago, were, were the steps up to my office. It's two floors. And for the elderly, it's a struggle. Mm-hmm. And we have signs at the bottom so that we'll come down, but people's pride won't, won't let them let them do that a lot of times. But um, there are several we have to walk up and down just because we're, we're afraid for them too. So that takes steps out of it. Anybody can come visit. We're going to have a council room for the first time in 20 years. Mm. We've been dodging different places we've been at the civic center and the library we're at the senior center now so it, it'll be nice to have a, a permanent home and and the nice thing too that room it's a nice size room can double for people's occasions that they wouldn't do things absolutely and, and lease out i guess you could say but um you know, we had uh, architects out of cambridge uh van way uh that uh have done a nice job we've been working with them for about a year now uh the the bids just came back and we had two companies bid on it and um it was within our price range, which we were happy about. Because with the cost of materials going up, we were really worried yeah. uh, the amount that it was going to go up. So we're in good shape that way. It'll uh, we've just got to sit down now with the company once uh, council approves it on Monday and get her started. Hopefully, if if everything works out well, which very rarely does it ever go on time, <laughs> uh, that uh, hopefully we'll have an open house in, in September for people to come and see it that would that would be fantastic now you talk about council and they're going to have the new chambers and everything but they've been working on things now you're not only working on uh, the day-to-day um you know mechanics of the village but you've been working on planning ahead which is a big deal right um for the first time we've got a five-year capital improvement plan uh we'll have a third reading and it'll it'll pass on monday um but it actually, it's, it's one of those things that makes it a lot easier to create a budget each year. Uh, the way we've done it in the past, you go year by year. You, you think ahead, but um, this year we had each department think and, and come up with, all right, where should we, we be five years from now? Mm-hmm. What do you have to get done? Uh, what projects, whether it's paving, whether it's water and sewer, um, you, you it's hard sometimes because you have to replace things too. So... Basically, uh, Lisa Steitler, our fiscal officer, uh, has worked really, really hard on this thing. This It's probably 150 pages long, um, and she goes through everything that, that we take care of. Because you have to include, uh, the, like you said, the day-to-day stuff, too, because mm-hmm. you know you're going to have to take care of that with the budget. But, um, no, that's that's a big, big deal. That's, that's a, a big accomplishment. And, and the reason it is is because this could lead to more uh, grant funding and that sort of thing? Well, a lot of times that I didn't understand this before I came mayor, you really have to be a year ahead. Like, we, we if we're going to pay five streets, we know what five streets it's going to be by July of the previous year because you have to have all the engineering done to go after grants mm-hmm. uh, to get the points. When, when you're going after grants, it's competitive. You're going against all the other communities that need paving done too, uh, and you're trying to save money. You're trying to make your dollars go a lot farther. Um, we're fortunate we have we have a street levy that, that brings in money each year, but that money covers less and less because of the cost 
to keep going up. So the grant money enables you to spend more uh, and get more done. Uh, we've been very fortunate in the past that we've gotten money for that for both our water projects and our paver, paving projects. Um, but yeah, five-year plan, we know what we've got to get done. We can get it done earlier and uh, make it easier when, when we're writing the grants. I'll throw this big umbrella at you. Accomplishments of the near past and uh, projects of the the near future. Are there any things that you can talk about there? Um, the 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 big thing that covers both of the past and the and the present and and the future really. Um, we started taking down the old Simon's factory um, two years ago. Uh, we we were very fortunate when the bidding came in. It was right right at COVID starting, and oh. we got everybody needed work. So we got some really great bids and and. The one um, for not, we were just going to knock down the biggest building. The estimate was 176,000. The bid came in at 91. Wow. Okay. So all of a sudden, we'd been saving for three years for that, and we were able to get 22 buildings knocked down. Um, and we just and we took a break for 2021 because we'd spent all that money. So what it did was it took 22 buildings down to the cement base. Um, Simons is a brownfield, meaning they had toxic substances that had to be cleaned up, and, and they did it down below where we started the new park. So this year, we were fortunate. Every county in the state of Ohio got a million dollars for brownfield cleanup. So we applied for it. Uh, we're going to get something. We don't know if we'll get everything, but the goal is to get all the cement picked up and get it uh, what's called a phase two testing the, that the EPA requires. That's looking for all the, the, the toxic substances. Uh, we, had a, we had a preliminary one done where they drilled through the cement in about 30 places. They found five bad spots. Um, four were arsenic, which arsenic is also natural in the ground, so mm -hmm. that enhances it. And we had one barium. They had a barium oven there that we had to have taken out uh, specially. But um, So what we're hoping is when they take everything out, we don't have a whole lot more than that. That'll make the cleanup easier and... We had, we had a company we talked to last summer that if everything's cleaned up, they'll they'll be interested in putting in a development there for nice senior housing and maybe some condominiums that overlook the river. So you got past, present, and future of, of what we're hoping for that, that area. And that's that's probably our second biggest project this year besides the, the administration building. Wow. Yeah, and that's that's great news, isn't it? That's a, that's We, we need the housing terribly. Um, and you know, you don't realize how everything connects to everything else until you get in these positions. But um, our economic downturn started when we lost Simons, when we lost that factor. That was 200 to 250 paying, good paying jobs. Yeah. And basically what disappeared was our middle class. Um, houses went up for sale. You had 2008, 2009 where the, the mortgages went bad and people bought up houses mm -hmm. that way to where we have a lot of low, low rentals. And uh, and we have we have people that try and take care of them, but um, we haven't had new housing since 1975. And um, it's a chicken and egg thing. Then you want a company's looking at you because we have a, a great industrial park and we have the land, and we're one of only 25 certified in the, in the whole state of Ohio. But they need a place for their employees to live too, and they've got to see that. So if we can get the company in, you you you've got want to get those uh, developers in as fast as you can too, and and they're watching things, and we have land available and for sale just for doing that. But you got to get one to get the other, and yeah. so it's that's part of the deal. You 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 work hard at. Let me touch on one last thing. I, it seems like, uh, and partly because of you, the um, government of the village and the school system seem to be so closely related in Newcomerstown and intertwining. I know you have to be happy about that as a past superintendent and the mayor, but uh, do you feel that there's a, a little more special connection there? I, I think there is. I think, it, and it's a natural one. After after working there for 35 years, and I didn't get to be superintendent, but I, I was a principal. I'm sorry. That's principal. all right. That's all right. Um, but um, the the fun thing, Jason, people who's who's the superintendent, was a student for me and played basketball for me when he was in junior high so you have you have a natural friendship there i think that uh -huh. that really helps um because actually I, i've been retired now for eight years and i don't know why the teachers have changed and retired mm -hmm. and over time but um we work together where we see things that they help us with an, an example um this past weekend uh we had 12 kids who had some community service hours students for something they had done and um we have we're going to have a ground penetrating radar done on our one uh, 
cemetery because we don't have very good records for it. Um, in order for that to come in, that machine to come in, we had to have a six-foot canopy underneath all the trees. We spent six hours last Saturday in the rain and snow, and these kids worked like troopers for us. Um, we, we, we filled up 10 drum, dump truck loads oh, wow. of brush and, and clippings that we did, and, and they did a great job. Well, when they called us and asked if we had anything those kids could do, we had something that we could, and so it's, it's mutual. It was, it was a nice help for both of us, and, um, and the kids proved themselves. We, we told them, you know, you ought to take a look at, we always look at summer help. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice that way, and, and, and it's relaxed, and we know that we can go to them and they can come to us if we need something. Well, it is it is good, and you're used to working with the school board and the council, so that all works out, I'm sure. We have, <laughs> and, and you know, we're we're really fortunate. We have we have a good school board right now, and we have a, we have an excellent council. Um, it's it's six people that are from different experiences, and they all bring something different to the table. And it it's not just coming to that table twice a month. It's they're doing work on the outside yeah. too that helps us, and and um, that's what makes things work better. It makes my job a lot easier. Well, you're doing a great job, and it sounds like more improvements to come. So, uh, Mayor Cadel, thank you, and uh, come back again. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to coming back. Very good. That's Pat Cadel, the mayor of Newcomerstown, our guest this morning on the 830 High Beam here on the BT Morning Show.